Yeah, I'd like to, um, there's something on my mind. I was just reading from um, the Jameson uh, Fawcett and Brown, a commentary, critical, uh, experimental and practical. And I was just looking at the, the commentary here. I'm just looking at Jonah and um, something that came up to mind is self-will versus God's will. And self-will is an action and God's will is another action. And God's will is more spoken in love and self-will is more um, spoken with ego. With ego. And in a sense, um, I would like to share this here and you can just bear with me. Um, Lord my God, number six, as if God belonged to wholly to each alone, the result of the experiments of difference between God and worldly idols is the returning backsliders feels. They that observe, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. All things which we keenly follow apart from God and Christ are lying and Christ are lying vanities because they promises what they never perform the idols of the intellect pride and ambitions convert and self will are virtually worshipped by many and as if they could make me happy which they cannot all the while men are forsaking god who is the source of mercy the personal experience which is first condition of happiness jonah's idol was self-will which he had set up above god's will God would have had God would have Nimina led to repentance and spared. Jonah would have Nimina destroyed, lest it should be destroyed of Israel. But now God's will is to become the will of the penitent prophet. Let us learn to consider self will the enemy of our own mercies. Let the self will see where we got here Jonah would have right let learn to consider self-will to be the enemy of our own mercies if we would have God for our own let us make his will ever our will otherwise running away impatiently from the spear and the place assigned to us by his good providence we entangle ourselves in the extra extra extrable difficulties Jonah's attributions of salvation to the Lord although seems to have been crowning point of thanksgiving which was followed by his immediate deliverance so this is just interesting do we versus self-will which is our actions and ourselves and what we think over God's will and what God thinks. And as being humans, we probably more so do that. Many silence with the lips have cried aloud with their heart, but many noisy with their lips could not with their heart adverse obtain aught. If then thou criest, cry within where God heareth, and that is from the heart, Augustine, Psalms 30, in uh, 6, section 10, though the earth with her bars was about him, verses 6, no prison house can bar out God from hearing the cry of penitence, faith and thanksgiving. No prison house, nothing can bar God. God is everywhere. God is good and God is good all the time. But no prison house, no bars, nothing could stop God 
within hearing the heart of a man or a woman crying out to God. Many silence with their lips have cried aloud with their hearts. Many noises with their lips could not be with their hearts adverse obtain aught. A lot of people will cry out with their lips and their mouth, but what happens is they're not really crying within from their heart. And that's what God seeks is our heart. God looks at our heart. He looks at our inner being and he looks at what we're about. He's not interested in outward appearance. He's not interested in the way we dress. But what he's interested in is, is our heart. Is our heart repentant? Is our heart really going to be about repentance and crying within? Because though the criers cry within where God heareth, God will hear it in your heart if you're crying from your heart, not from your lips and not from your, the silence, but actually from your heart, because God will hear that. And though cries cry within where God heareth, Augustine's on Psalms 30th, in our verses section 10, though the earth with all the bars are about him, in verse 6, verse six no prison house can bar out God from hearing the cry of penitence, faith and thanksgiving. Let the backsliders take the courage from the instance of Jonah and not despair as if he were hopelessly lost. Whilst there is life, there is hope. Though the waves of lust through the wails of Satan have engulfed him again, who in, 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 escaped for a time the pop the pollutions of the world, yet God who delivered the entombed prophet can also deliver the backslider if only he will turn heartily to the Lord and like Jonah accept humbly the punishments of his iniquities and five, the deep punishment of his iniquities, the deep wherein the deep where into Pharaoh sank as a stone. Never to rise again was but his temporary prison of Jonah, and God's bidding gave up to life again, who seemed as one dead, but Jonah literally suffered what the psalmist spiritually experienced in Psalms 7, and all the ways and their experience, and all the ways and thy bill flows are going over me. Cast out God's cast out of God's sight in verses 4 like Adam cast out of paradise he still could do one thing he looked to God with the eyes of faith even when God hid his face from him he you know we talk about the garden of Eden where Adam could do one thing and what could Adam do cast he was cast out of God's sight but like Adam he cast out paradise he still could do one thing he looked to god he looked to god with the eyes of faith having the eyes of faith and looking towards god having those eyes of faith and looking towards god and so this is what I'm saying. The prophet can also, who delivered the entombed prophet, can also deliver the backslider. And if only one will turn heartily to the Lord, and like Jonah, accept humbly the punishment of his iniquities. The deep where Pharaoh sunk as a stone, never to rise again, was the temporary prison of Jonah, and God's bidding gave up a life again, him who seemed as one dead. Jonah literally suffered what the psalmist spiritually experienced. All the ways and thy billows, billows are going over me. Cast out God's sight, like Adam cast out paradise, he still could do one thing. He could still do one thing. He looked to God with the eyes of faith, even when God hid his face from him. This is which makes the everlasting distinction between believers and temporary forsaken for the sin and retrobates who are utter castaways. The believers still trust when he can no longer see or feel God, and in that he trusts and cries to God, and still he he's God. 
See, the simple fact is, I just want to leave it there, that we look at self-will, which is not what we want. We want God's will in our lives. We want the actions of God's will spoken with love, spoken with what God is God's will. And sometimes you've got to look at the fact that it's not always about love. The agape is God's love. There's, there's different loves of God. God is our Father, our spiritual Father. He will chastise us. But when we look at a size one here, and I'll just leave this in closing. In a size one, verses 15. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear you. Here, your hands are full of blood. And that's where we were reading back in Job. Is though God cast you out, and you seem not to be able to hear, but if you look with your eyes and look with the faith and and the faith of God and look towards God towards the Lord Jesus Christ then he will eventually there will be a breakthrough and a deliverance but we've got to somewhat do what Job was saying and that is what in in Job as it was saying here in these these words And so we've got to have, be able to be still and know who the Lord is. Be still and know who the Lord is. See, we see here, though the earth with her bars was about him, about Jonah, no pers prison house can bar out God from hearing the cry of penance and faith and thanksgiving. Let the backsliders take courage from the instance of Jonah and not despair as if they were hopelessly lost. Whilst there is life, there is hope. Where there is life, there is hope. So where there is life, there is hope. Though the waves of lust through the whales of Satan have engulfed him again who had escaped from the time of pollutions of the world, yet God who delivered and entombed the prophet can also deliver the backsliders. Amen. Hallelujah. If only you will turn heartily to the Lord like Jonah and accept and humbly the punishment for your iniquities to accept acceptance acceptance of what the Lord's punishment for our iniquities are and gladly embrace him and look towards Jesus Christ in Isaiah 1 verses 15 says when you spread out your hands I will hide my eyes from you even though you make many prayers I will not hear your hands are full of blood wash yourself and make yourself clean God is saying Wash yourself and make yourself clean. Put away the evils of your doings before my eyes. Correct to do, cease to do evil. So cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the, the oppressor, defend the fatherless, and plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be as, be as wool. If you're willing... And obedient, you shall eat of the good land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. God wants to reason with you. God loves you. But we've got to be able to step out in faith and believe in him. Step out in faith and believe in him. And if we believe in him, then it is God's grace sufficient enough for us that he will bring his hands out and say, Welcome, son. Welcome home. You've done that from the goodness of your heart. You've done this from the goodness of your heart. That many silence with the lips have cried out aloud with the heart. Many noisy with their lips could not with their hearts adverse obtain aught. If thou criest, cry the within, crying within... Where God will hear, in Augustine's Psalms 30, in our verses section 10, though the earth with her bars was about him, no prison house can bar out God from hearing the cry of penance and faith and thanksgiving within the heart. But if you're doing it from the head and from the mouth and you're crying out with your lips moving and your, and your head and your heart, but it's not from the heart, and it's not from within, then God is not going to hear that. And we see this in Isaiah 1, where it says, 
your new moons and your appointed feast. My soul hates. This is God's. This is a vision from, from Messiah's. My soul hates and they are trouble to me. This is what God is saying. And I'm weary of bearing them. God is weary of bearing these these sacrifices because the simple fact is people were bringing sacrifices to the Lord and it, they, it was from their lips and their head but not from their heart and not from within. When you come to appear before me who has required this from your hand, you trample my courts, bring no more futile sacrifices and incense and abomination to me. The new moon, the new moon sabbaths and the calling of assemblies, I cannot endure in the iniquities and the sacred meetings, your new moons and your appointed feast. My soul hates, they trouble me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourself and make yourself clean. You know, God is talking about wash yourself and make yourself clean. Put away the evils of your doings from before my eyes and cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice and rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, though they shall be as white as snow. This is verse 18. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Verses 19 of Isaiah's 1. And if you are willing to be obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse to rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I think we can all sort of, you know, when it comes to Jonah and Jonah being swallowed by a big fish, um, the point comes down to is these these idols. And one of one of um, Jonah's idols were self will, and his action was self will. He he knew who God was, and he thought that he could have his ego and etc. on self will and take an action, but not look at the God's will and what God's action was. Sometimes what God says and what God does, he's entitled to change his mind. God is from the beginning to the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Hallelujah. Amen for that. And God says, come now and let us reason together. God loves you so much that he just wants to sit down and say, hey, I love you. And, and, and this is where Pharaoh was hardening his heart as well. And not coming from the heart. And he kept on hardening his heart. But my prayer today for everyone is to soften your heart. To listen to the voice of God. To, as God says, come and let's reason. Let's talk together. Let's reason. And realize that Jesus Christ loves you. He loves me. You know, I'm no difference to you. I was an unbeliever before I come to the Lord. But my question comes down to self-will versus God's will. Self-will versus God's will. I want to leave it there. And I want to encourage people to read the Word every day. I want to encourage people to read their Bibles and um, read the Word of God. A Bible that has the Word of God in it. If, it doesn't, if it's not the Word of God, then why read it? It has to be the Word of God. As the Berean, Bereans, every time Paul preached to the Bereans, they went away and they actually looked at the Word of God to see what, what Paul was saying was true. So what we've got to look at is our idol should not be self-will. We don't even idolise God, but our, our will should be God's will. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Giving God all the glory. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Following God's will, not man's will, not the things of the world, but looking at God's will. And is your actions within the world or is your actions within God's will? That's a different sermon in itself, but in a sense, that's the fruits of the Spirit and all those other things. But looking at is your will in will of God's will, or is it self-will, as you see in Jonah, where Jonah had decided to go, no, you know, God said go to Nineveh and, and preach to the people and save the people. But God had changed his mind and said, no, the people are repentance. It's coming from the heart. 
the heart coming from within. And I would just urge everybody today to read their Bibles, to pray. And if you're a new Christian in Christ, just spend time with God on your own. Talk to God. But soften your heart and realize that God loves you and he loves me. So I just want to leave it there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this message, Lord. Thank you for bringing this message, Lord. I just pray for everybody. I pray for where I live, Lord. I pray for the church that I attend, Lord. And Lord, I just ask you that it can be within, that we can be about God's will, not our self-will, but about God's will. That we can put off the old and put on the new, to be within God's will, not self-will, Lord. Lord, to make us stronger, to realise and learn from Jonah. And Lord, I just ask people, to realise that it is about God's will, being in line with God's will, being obedient and faithful, faithful and obedient, listening to the power of the Holy Spirit, listening to God, not arguing about what God wants us to do, but just doing, being doers of the Lord, Lord, just to be doers, Lord. I just ask this in your mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah.